Hello knitters, Barbara Benson here. I'm an independent knitwear designer who also likes to make videos here on my YouTube channel, Watch Barbara Knit. Make sure to check in the description notes below the video where you will find links to all of my online shenanigans, including how to get my patterns to knit up for yourself, how to join the Watch Barbara Knit Facebook group, how to support me on Patreon, and where to get Watch Barbara Knit merchandise. Today we are going to have class, <laughs> essentially. We're gonna have a little lesson in theory and the theory we are going to be talking about is the math of lace to give you maybe a better understanding of how lace is structured and what's really going on there and my hope is is that by better understanding precisely what's going on or just having a better grasp on it it will help you if you run into issues and need to troubleshoot lace um, and to better understand and like make your knitting process of lace smoother. So I have set up my tech stuff so that I can do some screen sharing and we're going to be looking at my um, charting software because really I cannot visualize lace from a written set of instructions and i'm not saying you can't knit lace from written instructions i'm just saying it's for me very challenging to visualize it and i'm hoping that by showing you a visual representation of the things i'm talking about you'll be able to grasp it better as well uh, because like trying to demonstrate this with actually needles and yarn in my hands would be really challenging and take a very 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 long time so that is what we're going to be doing. Um, you will see me looking over because that is where, so my camera is directly in front of me. We're gonna shake a little bit because I'm putting my hand on the mouse. Let me see if I can bring it over here. Do, 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 do. See, the problem is, is then I, it overlaps weird things. Okay, we're gonna try it this way. So what I'm going to do is click to here. And what we have here is this is my charting software that I use to pretty much design all of my patterns. Um, very rarely am I starting from written. Most of the times I am starting from a chart. And the software, because I know people are going to ask, you can see it up here. It's Envision Knit, E N V I S I O K N I T, Envision Knit uh, Design. And it has been great for me. And when I've had issues with it and I have contacted, and usually it's user error, just let me say that, when I contact the creators of it, they've always been very, very helpful. So little plug for them, they don't know it. I paid for it, I'm just telling you. So this is, you can see here, the way this is arranged is I can have just as many charts as I want here and I have some demo charts that I wanted to show you. Uh, if I want to manipulate the chart, I go see we this we have yarn and stitches. This is the chart list. This is if I want to add borders. This is like the generated written instructions from their system. And then this is to see what it's going to look like. What this would look like. And you can see it's got it's white yarn the only stitches we have here are knit and purl, and those are the instructions. They're very complicated pattern here. So we are going to go to here, which is the where I do the actual designing. And what we're gonna talk about is lace. Um, I'm gonna make that go, see this, you click around. This, there's all kinds of fun things here, and this is all in and of itself, but Right now we're gonna use the basic stitches. We've got yarn over, knit two together, slip, slip, knit are the basic stitches that we're going to talk about to start off with. And what lace is all about is intentionally putting holes in your knitted fabric using the yarn over, okay? and we all know 
or if you don't know, you are going to know now that the yarn over is a one stitch increase that increases the stitch count of your row or round. So to make lace, assuming we want to keep the row count or the round count consistent, we're not trying to make this piece larger for every increase that you use, i.e. yarn over, you have to have a decrease to balance it out, okay? Which at your most basic and what most people are going to recognize is knit two together, yarn over, right? A knit two together, yarn over. And then if we wanted to go, let's skip three, yarn over. And then if we want to balance it, we would slip, slip, knit. So knit two together is a right leaning decrease and slip, slip, knit is a left leaning decrease. Now we think of right and left based on as it's being viewed from the right side. And that is what a chart is. A chart is showing you a pictorial representation of what your finished knitting is going to look like when viewed from the right side. So this, see all it is is clear boxes, right? Which means the knit stitch. But on the wrong side, this, as we showed here, this clear on the wrong side, which here's row two, it says purl 20. And that is why the empty box is knit on the right side and purl on the wrong side, because it's what you see from the right side. Okay, from the, so it, if you want to see a knit stitch from the right side, you have to purl it on the wrong side. So if I come in here, and I put a pearl on the wrong side, and we go back here, we now have a new stitch, because on the wrong side, if we want to present a pearl to the right side from a wrong side row, you have to knit, so the bump will show up on the face of the work. So that is just how knits and pearls and how the symbols mean different things depending on whether they're on the right or the wrong side if you are knitting flat. So here we go. We've got our knit two together yarn over, which is going to make a right leaning. And this knit two together, when it's right next to that yarn over, is kind of going to open up that yarn over. And it's going to be like as open as you want it to be. And then the next one is going to be the yarn over with the slip slip knit, which will pull in this direction and it will remain open. Okay. Now, in my charting software, if I wanted to, it's not going to stop me. I could just go yarn over, yarn over, yarn over, yarn over, yarn over, yarn over. Mm, we don't want those there. Boop, boop, boop. Right? And I can do that, but that's not going to work. Because if you look at that's 19, no, 18 yarn overs. <laughs> so as is, that would add, in theory, 18 stitches to your thing. But in honesty, it's just going to put a giant hole. Unless you knit, purl, knit, purl, all those yarn overs, it's just going to be one giant stitch. Um, so that was probably silly. I'm going to move to line which is the line tool, so I can just pull it in the line. So like this, I can do this bit, right? Yarn over, yarn over. I want all these yarn overs, right? So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 yarn overs. If I want 10 yarn overs, then I'm going to have to have 10, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten decreases. Those are the slip slip knits that are going now. Starting a row with a yarn over is rarely fun, so I personally wouldn't recommend this, but we're just looking at it. And that is, so each one has its pair. Now, since we're talking about theory, I could come in here 
and take out this one and this one and add, no, I didn't want increases, I want decreases. I could do a double decrease, right? So that's slip one, no, that's not a double, that's, yeah, slip one, knit one, pass slip stitch over, pass slip stitch over, or we could do a central double decrease, slip, one, slip two together, knit one, pass two slitch stitches over. There's all different kinds. Um, you know what, no, this was a single. Where's slip one, knit two together? There it is. This is the one, you, ah! <laughs> see, I can make a hot mess. La, 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 goodbye. Um, but I took out the two single decreases and added in this double decrease. And then I could also say, okay, I wanna put one here now. Now I have too many decreases because I didn't remove this one. I'm taking a stitch out. So I'm gonna go in and remove Nope, wrong one. I'm click happy here, people. So let's do here and here. And then we need to remove here, there. So that, the math on this is going to work out just as well as the math with it was just a single increase and a single decrease, right? As long as there's one of each, and there was there were 10 increases and 10 decreases, that's fine. This also has 10 increases and 10 decreases, but it's two, four, six, eight, nine, 10. So it's still balancing out and this lace is still not going to increase or decrease your stitch count. And that's really what I wanted to, to help you understand. Now, another thing we can talk about is right in these examples I've shown you, the yarn overs are right next to the decreases. That is not necessarily something you have to do. I could do, um, let's make sure I'm on a right side. That's a wrong side, right side. I could do one, two, three, four, okay? So that's four increases. And then I could do one, two, three, four, and that is going to work. And that's gonna give us a little bit of a feather and fan. If we want to make it a little more exaggerated, I can move these out. So here we go. This, because we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, that is going to work. Uh, with no problem because we have the same number. Again, it's balanced. And you can always, if you're confused about a lace pattern, stop and look at the pattern and count the number of increases and decreases that exist in that row to see where there might actually be an issue, okay? Now, we're gonna go into the, I wanted to show you this. The increases and decreases, because knitting is flexible, do not necessarily have to be on the same row. You can delay those stitches to get particular effects that you're looking to get. And then this chart you will see has these gray, and we're going to go to here where I'm gonna show you. It is a no stitch. And no stitch literally means there's no stitch here, okay? Because what is happening is that the cast on on this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So our cast on here, and this doesn't give us that information, our cast on is going to be 17, okay? But you'll notice across here that I have 19 columns in my chart because I'm gonna cast on 17, but in this first row, we have four increases and two decreases. And what we just learned is they really need to be paired. 
So that means there's actually there's actually 19 stitches in this first row, but you only cast on 17 and we've increased by two. Then row two is going to be 19 stitches. Since this chart is 19 stitches wide, on this next row, row three, where we only have the decreases, right? So we have two decreases and zero increases. That's because this, this, in, this decrease right here is taking out this increase, the one from the previous row. And this decrease right here is taking out this increase from the previous row. So when it removes those, that takes it from 19 stitches back down to 17 stitches. But to maintain the shape of the chart and make it readable, you put in this no stitch symbol. Because what's gonna happen is the written instructions are going to be one, two, th knit four, knit two together, one, two, three, four, five, six, knit seven, slip, slip, knit, and then knit four. There's only 17 stitches because we're decreasing. And then as you can see, as this piece stacks up, what it alternates between is rows where we're increasing by two and rows where we're decreasing by two. So these have, the one row has extra increases and then the next row has no increases. So you're decreasing that previous row away. And you can see that on this chart is how this works. Now, this is gonna lead me to the other thing I wanted to show you, which is Stitch Maps. Stitch Maps is a really cool program made by JC Breyer that's goal was to make charts look more like the actual knitting. And you can go in and it's really, really cool. But here, let me show you. So this is the stitch map for the same piece. It is The stitch pattern is called crashing waves. In a fixed standard traditional chart, it looks like this. In stitch maps, it looks like this. So it can you can better see, and this has multiple repeats on it. So this has two repeats across and two repeats deep. So you can see where these stitches are going. And because of how it's worked, you don't have to worry about no stitch because this actually, you just see the yarn over, it makes it appear, and then these take it away. So it's taking away and taking away. So this, the stitch map, map actually gives you like, this is what, your finished lace is going to look like. It gives you a better idea and it can, you can see how those stitches are going to be moving, which I think is really, really cool. And you can see how this fabric, even though we're going 19 stitches, 17 stitches, 19 stitches, 17 stitches on the repeat, it still roughly makes a rectangle because you're never really increasing because you keep bringing it back. And because it's flexible and it's because it's knitting, you can have that wiggle room to delay your decreases a little bit further. And I've seen it done with like leaf patterns and things like that. You can see how far you can push it. It's a lot of fun. So this is the one. Now let's go back to here and we're going to go to this. I want to show you this because this is talking about more what can happen when you move the yarn overs in relation to the decreases um, because you can manipulate the fabric in different ways. And I also wanted to show you what happens um, so what I'm going to do is this is one repeat. Okay. It's seven stitches wide and it's 24 rows. If I copy that and paste it here, you can see how this, this line of yarn overs actually hops across your, 
um, your repeat line. I'm going to undo so you can see. So this, it's hard to visualize. Like sometimes it's hard to visualize what this is going to look like. But then when I put this back, you actually can start getting a better idea with the repeats. And you can see that these two here would be going up over here and how it's jumping that repeat line. So I wanted you to see this. And then we have the here, this, when you move that increase and decrease, when you move them apart from each other, the further apart they are, the more it distorts those columns of knitting, right? And you can see in the stitch map, you can see how the curves happen. Right? You can see that it's pulling the yarn overs. See, because this yarn over appears here and then it snakes all the way up here. And this one appears here and it snakes and then comes back in and gets decreased away. So it moves things as opposed to here. This is what a chevron looks like. And you can see how it's moving. It's not sinuous. Um, it's just moving more in straight lines because our decreases are in a column and our increases are in a column. So you can just see it's coming zoop, 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 which are cool because I love chevrons. But since in this one, our increases are actually moving and the decreases are in a straight line, it's making it do that sinuous action. And this stitch pattern, if you're looking for it, is called Flame Chevron. Um, it's a very a very popular and um, and that one is stitch number 207 out of the Japanese, one of my Japanese stitch dictionaries because I put it in there. Um, so, and actually you can see here that this is private vis visibility. Um, something uh, something just landed on my thumb and itch. Sorry, this is private visibility. These are things that I put in myself. Um, you can actually go into Stitch Maps and browse and see all different kinds. I have a, a membership, so I pay for this. Um, you can see all kinds of things that people put in here. It's really cool. Uh, you can see like that's like a mock cable. So we've got, this is doing uh, decreases and then this is gonna be like a twisted increase. So it's not lace. It's just, you're looking for the texture, right? Okay. So, <laughs> so that's a lot, I know. Uh, and it's just really scratching the surface. If you take nothing away from this video other than Every increase needs its decrease because really that is the base of lace. If you have an increase, if a stitch appears as a whole, then another existing stitch has to go bye-bye. Uh, that's how it does. You can play with it and, and really what you can do with it is absolutely infinite uh, as you can see in all the different lace patterns that are out there and you can create shapes and you can manipulate things and it's all kinds of fun. You have one stitch, two stitch, three stitch, four stitch, five stitch decreases. You can do single yarn over, you can do a double yarn over. There are ways to do yarn overs that are more than that as long as you alternate knit and purl in the different yarn overs but that gets into a little bit of advanced technique. But when you're doing lace, making sure you understand that every yarn over has to have its decrease. Okay. Um, and also understanding that if you're doing shaping, you're, you don't, you don't want to decrease away that, uh, that yarn over that's actually for shaping. Cause sometimes it is going to be off, a seam off. You're like, Ooh, that one doesn't have its buddy, but that's because it's actually an actual increase and it's to make the pattern grow. 
uh, in its way. So that's like the central spine on a classic triangle shawl that's just the yarn overs down the center. That is to make it grow. They do not have a buddy. They do not have their decrease because they're intended to create a stitch because that Otherwise, you just have a rectangle. But to really play with and understand the math of lace, rectangles or tubes are really the way to go because it helps you really understand that balance of making sure you have the right number of increases and decreases. So I hope that some of you found this interesting. I'm also really hoping that there are some questions because this is really a subject that I could talk about for a very, very long time. I've talked way longer than I normally do. I just find it fascinating uh, and interesting. It's like a puzzle that I get to solve. Please ask me in the comments questions. It might lead to other videos and I always like having the conversation. And next week is the uh, last Thursday of the month. So you could always save the questions and ask them at the live that I do the last Thursday of every month at seven Eastern time. So if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up, click that like button. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload a new video, please subscribe to my channel and select notifications. Thank you so much.